Colin Kaepernick has finally gotten a real opportunity. Now, again, it's just a speculated reach out call, um, but there is a message out there by Adam Schefter, which usually, Ian Rappaport, Adam Schefter, usually pretty like on the know that the Las Vegas Raiders are going to bring in Colin Kaepernick. You look at Devontae Adams. You look at that team, how it's built. Uh, you look at Vegas. I mean, Vegas wants to sell out the stadium. If I'm an owner and I just want to create sizzle, yeah, Devontae Adams is sizzle. David Carr, Derek Carr, sorry, sizzle. Uh, David played with me. Uh, we, we got drafted the same <laughs> year. Uh, yeah. But Derek Carr uh, is sizzle. Um, Darren Waller winning. That will get fans. That, but But Colin Kaepernick will get fans there for training camp. If you have Colin Kaepernick around early, one, it's Vegas. So who wouldn't want to go to the desert and go to the casino and party and sit at the beach and, and or, or sorry, not the beach, the pool um, and, and have a cocktail or two at the bar. But then also I get to go see if Colin Kaepernick is good or is this all hype? You know, did he really sit, sit out for six years because he was blackballed by the NFL or was he really just not good anymore? So that's why I think the, the Las Vegas Raiders are on or something, Sam. Um, I, I, I do see, you know, people now understanding social justice is important. Um, when you see the first cop kind of convicted in the George Floyd murder, I think more and more people are starting to realize, you know what? These guys are like bad people, like not all of them. You know, I, I look at it like this. People always say this. And before I turn over to you, it's, it's terrible to look at a group of people and and blame them and ostracize them for their worst people. And it's tough to look at a person in their face. They've done nothing wrong. And you just say, oh, this person might be bad or this person might be a bad person. Black people deal with this all the time. So when people say that about cops, like we can't put all the cops, stop putting all the black people in the same bucket. And so when Colin Kaepernick did that, that was at a time when it was at its worst. It was social media was blowing up over it. Um, people were just like a mod uh, Aubrey, you know, um, you know, when you look at his murder of, of guys saying we have him cornered. He's just a guy jogging down the street, no weapons, no nothing. And they thought he deserved to die because allegedly he's a he's a, a burglar, even if he was. And there's a thing, even if he was a burglar, no weapon. There's no reason for that. But sticking to Colin Kaepernick, I'm wondering. Now, this is the thing. They're just bringing him in for a workout. I would not. I would be okay. And I don't know where you stand. I would be okay with the Vikings bringing him in for a workout. This is why. Kirk Cousins has been healthy. We know that. But Colin Kaepernick with his legs gives you something that if you make it work, 49ers versus Packers, playoff game, it can be dangerous. Kyler Murray, Dak Prescott, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, quarterbacks that can throw and run have seemed to make it work in the NFL. Not saying you take Kirk Cousins out for Colin Kaepernick, but I'm like, why not have an additional package in there when you know you need something like a speed option with the quarterback, um, when you can add different levels to your offense? Uh, if you do need a really good backup, is 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 Sean Mannion, we've seen what he did with the Packers game. Is he a guy that can get you through the rest of the season? Or I don't know if that was the Bears game Sean Mannion played, but is he a guy that can get you going for the rest of the season? Is Kellen Mond the answer? I look at Kellen Mond, honestly, and you look at his college stats, um, you know, 800 completions, 1,300 attempts, 59% on his college career, almost 10,000 yards passing, uh, 71 touchdowns, 27 interceptions. Not bad. But do you think he can become a guy that can lead a team? He's your third-round draft pick. Or can Colin Kaepernick maybe be the backup that can be your Nick Foles for the Eagles and find out and keep the season going? You know, that or your Case Keenum for the Vikings and keep the season going. Like that's the question. Um, that I pose to you, Sam, because I wouldn't be opposed to Colin Kaepernick battling with Mannion and, and Kellen Mond because everybody seems to not be sold on Mond. Now, we know Zimmer was a little bit hard on him, so maybe he needs to be nurtured as well. But I, I wouldn't be opposed to Colin Kaepernick being the backup or fighting for the backup job for the Vikings at camp. 
So as always, I like to try to acknowledge both sides of this. So on one hand, Colin Kaepernick absolutely should have had a shot somewhere before this. Six years is a long time. Um, and when you look at the level of quarterback play in the league, especially in the backup ranks, he definitely has the credentials to have earned a shot. And when I look at what, what Las Vegas has behind Derek Carr, Jared Stidham, Nick Mullins, yeah, what does it hurt to bring him in and at least see what he can do? Mm -hmm. And that same thing would apply to the Vikings. Is Nate Stanley really a better use of a roster spot than Colin Kaepernick? The price is going to be right. And after six years off, Colin Kaepernick's not costing you anything. So what does it hurt to have him come in? Now, the Vikings' old regime really abided by non-competitive backups. They wanted a backup who would be Kirk Cousins' studying buddy. With all due respect to Sean Mannion, mm -hmm. they liked Sean because of his practice habits, because of his classroom habits, and he would support Kirk. They've never had anyone who came in competitively with Kirk. And the Rick Spielman era, they were averse to any kind of sideshow, any kind of distraction. They didn't want to have extra reporters coming in asking questions, and there would be that with mm -hmm. Colin Kaepernick. So if you make that move, you are accepting that. But maybe this regime is different. Maybe Quazy and Kevin O'Connell are more receptive to that kind of thing. And once again, it does not hurt to see what he can do. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm looking at this, if I'm taking the names out, and I'm just looking at the age, the cost, do I want a 34-year-old who hasn't played in six years, or do I want a 23-year-old, whatever Mond is, mm -hmm. who's still under contract for three more years and has a lot right. of upside? You probably lean with the younger guy. Yeah. just in terms oh, yeah. of contract status and age. Um, but I, I'm not saying Colin Kaepernick couldn't come in and, and look decent. I mean, right. all the reports are that he's been working out and, and still has that that natural athleticism. So mm -hmm. I'd be intrigued at minimum, Ron. Yeah, and there's the thing. That's what I say. I'm not opposed to it. Now, this is the one thing I will say to be critical of it. I never liked Colin Kaepernick's throwing motion. Like, it always seemed like he wasn't holding the ball properly or it was in the wrong spot. Like, it looked like he put it on a shelf, and then he's like – it was just a weird throwing motion. Um, his ability to just run, I think, is what sold it because that's – you look at all those games. You know, he does the, 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 the bicep kiss after he runs for a touchdown. That's where the 49ers did well with him, you know, the running. That's why I feel like, you know, I think Trey Lance is probably their future – um, I mean, definitely the way they drafted him in the hat, but I think with his mobility, you look at that run game and all that. And so when I look at Colin Kaepernick, um, can Kevin O'Connell even create an offense uh, that he's viable? Because right now it's a pocket, you know, Matt Stafford, Jared Goff type of offense. You know, you sit back in the pocket, you read, you're going to have dump off hot routes. Uh, you got to get out of the blitz, you know, yourself. You got to check out of this. You got to, you know, do what you need to do. Um, but I look again, I go back to the stats, though, in college. Colin Kaepernick had better college stats than uh Kalaman. his pro stats for sure he's a twelve thousand yard passer 72 touchdowns 30 interceptions uh 69 games played uh close to 60 percent completions so decent you know pretty good pretty good quarterback but you're right 34 years old is old in football terms but he's been rested for six years he hasn't beat his body up he hasn't taken hits he hasn't um you know he's just been running around lifting weights um, so, you know, but watching the Michigan warm up work or workout, you call it, I guess, spring game. I watched the whole thing. I recorded it cause I wanted to go back and watch it. Um, he looked okay. Like he missed some throws. Uh, some of the receivers weren't great. They dropped some balls right in their hands. So that didn't help. Um, but overall for a guy that hadn't played in six years, again, no shoulder pads on though, no helmet, no guy coming at him. He looked okay. But again, I never liked his throwing motion. I thought his athleticism is what made him. Uh, one of the, you know, not top quarterbacks, but quarterback that can get you to a Super Bowl. And he did it. So, I mean, he knows how to win. He knows how to maintain games. Um, I, I just think, you know, he mentally wore on himself with all the interviews, all the social justice stuff. Never really had a true PR person to help him understand and explain his message. I mean, it was, it never seemed calculated. It always was like, well, I did this today because of it. Like, it just, it, he needed a calculated person to help him get his message out. I think he started to do it now. He partnered with Netflix, so on and so forth. Um, but no, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Now, is he the, should he be the backup over Mon? No. Should he be the third quarterback? Maybe. You know, if you think Mannion or Mon is two, Kaepernick is three. Okay. If you just want to give him a shot to him on the roster. But again, why have a 34 year old as your third quarterback? Well, I mean, you've done it before with older guys. 
It's a totally different story. Uh, you look at Jake, or what that Jake, whatever his name, Peterman, Nate Peterman, or I think that's his name. You know, he's still yeah. getting jobs. So, yeah, I, I I hope Colin Kaepernick gets a chance. But but that that Kellen Mond, I, I definitely want to see where he's at. Because then, it, like, let's say Kaepernick kills it in the preseason this year for somebody. And then you're looking at Mond and he's still making the same mistakes that Zimmer thought he was making. Then I could see it. I could I could understand where they would go from there. But up next on the Ron Johnson Show, we're going to have Vikings former defensive back Robert Griffith. Cannot wait to talk to him. Stay tuned for that. If you enjoy the Ron Johnson Show, you'll enjoy our other daily show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. It's Superior Sports Talk with Carol Evans, Sports Director Reggie Wilson, and his co-host Luke Emman. Whether it's Twins, Vikings, Wolves, or Wild, Reggie and Luke have it covered. All the breaking news, all the big opinions. Catch their show five days a week by subscribing to Locked On Sports Minnesota's YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts.